Hey, I'm Shane. Today I'm going to be talking about some extension tubes for Sony cameras and showing you kind of how you can get some sweet macro photography without breaking the bank. So these are the Mike Sony extension tubes for Sony E-mount cameras like the A6000, A6100, A6600, and the full frame cameras like the A7 III and the A7R IV. So a bunch of companies actually make these identical extension tubes and basically just rebrand them it seems. Newer has an option, Mike has an option, and there's a few others on Amazon you can find. Overall though, they're basically all the same. They're 25 bucks for the version with a plastic flange on the bottom, and then 35 bucks for the version with the metal flange. And functionally, they both work the exact same. They'll have electronic contacts on them that allow you to pass through data from the camera to the lens and back and forth, so you get your lens information, as well as still being able to control your aperture and autofocus, which is pretty sweet, and I'll touch on that more later. But overall, the build quality, quality is much better than you might expect. They're very solid in their design. They're certainly not weather sealed, so I wouldn't even consider the thought of going anywhere moist with these on my camera. And they still are plastic, so if you have a heavier lens on the end of the extension tubes, make sure you're conscious of not putting too much stress on the extension tubes because they're going to be the weak point in that situation. So I originally got these a few months ago with the intention to see how they compare to a real macro lens. And if you could actually use them as a substitute to macro lens, or at least for close focusing in video and getting some like ring shots for a wedding. So I ultimately found out that you actually can, but with a bunch of catches along with that. I use a macro lens still for all my work, but I actually put these on my macro lens to get some insanely close shots, and it's a ton of fun. In this video, I'm going to touch on basically how they work, how you can use them, and the benefits and sacrifices you make while using extension tubes. So using these tubes is pretty darn simple. All you do is you attach your lens to the one end and your camera to the other end and you're off to the races. You can use one tube at a time, so you can use the 10 millimeter tube or the uh, 16 millimeter tube, and then you can combine them together to make them into a 26 millimeter tube, which is how I usually use them. I'm no mathematician and I can't even pretend to explain the formula that you have to use to calculate the new minimum focusing distance while using these extension tubes but I can explain it somewhat. So the way it works is it basically reduces both the minimum focusing distance and the maximum focusing distance of your lens. So the biggest thing to keep in mind is that even though you can get some more close focusing shots while using these extension tubes, you also won't be able to use it as a normal lens because the maximum distance you can focus is usually only a couple meters away or even less than a meter away from your lens, which makes it pretty limiting when you put these on your camera. In general though, if you use a wider lens with the extension tubes, you actually get better benefits. So for example, if I use a 35 millimeter lens capable of replicating the subject a quarter size on my sensor, and I put the 26 millimeter extension tubes on that lens, I'll be able to get a proper one-to-one -one reproduction on my sensor. However, if I use a 200 millimeter lens with a quarter reproduction on my sensor, I'll, and I put the 26 millimeter of extension tubes behind the lens, I'll only get a benefit of about 0.38 uh, magnification. So it's a marginal difference. So really the wider the lens is, the more benefit you get. On Sony specifically, if you're using the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter, it already has a magnificent macro functionality to it that it can actually get pretty close to subjects. So if you put all 26 millimeters of the extension tubes onto that lens, you can actually get a pretty decent macro lens out of it. There is diminishing returns because once you get so wide, the minimum focusing distance goes inside the lens rendering the lens pretty much useless. 
but that's a whole other issue and it depends on the lens itself and if that will be an issue for it. Ultimately though, the thing to know is that this won't turn your existing lens into a macro lens. It will just make it much more functional at getting close focusing shots. I'll put a link in the description of the video to a website with a calculator so that you can look up the specs of your lens already and see how much these would benefit your lens by putting them on it. The biggest sacrifice you make though while using extension tubes is actually an image sharpness usually. The reason for this is basically you're cropping in on how much of the glass in the lens you're really using. So you're basically using it in unideal situations. So you're, you're taking what it's meant to be at all the glass being used and only using a portion of that, similar to cropping in on an image. But the other thing is most lenses that are designed to be used as portrait lenses or middle focusing lenses, so like a 55 millimeter, is meant to be used usually at 10 to like five to 10 meters. So it's gonna be sharpest in that range and they'll design the lens to be best there. When you put the extension tubes on it and then focus at the closest distance it can go, you're pushing the lens to a situation which it wasn't designed for. So even if you have an insanely sharp lens, it might not actually translate to being a better lens with the extension tubes. And I found that like my Tamron actually does better than my prime lenses at using it for macro stuff, just because the lens was tailored to be able to have close focusing function on it. And it's better at its minimum focusing distance and it's sharper there. So it's a thing to keep in mind. In terms of autofocusing though, these extension tubes do pretty darn well. I was surprised that there was autofocus functionality with them when I got them. I was expecting it to be pretty much useless, but it actually can function pretty well for photography. For video, I wouldn't recommend using the autofocus and really you don't want to when you're using macro just because the subject is so close to you. The plane of focus is going to be so small that Autofocus will appear jittery most likely in those situations, but for macro photography, it's completely functional. So the next part of this video is just gonna be more of sample images from the lens and I'm gonna be talking about it. So I tried the extension tubes on all the lenses that I own, as well as my true macro lens, the 90 millimeter F2.8, to see just how well these macro tubes stack up against a true, incredibly good macro lens. It's kind of an unfair comparison in most situations because a dedicated thousand dollar macro lens is usually going to do better than $30 extension tubes, but I am just going to give it a shot to see how it works. I used flash for all the example photos with comparing directly apples to apples with the macro lens. So the lighting should be almost exactly the same. But one thing you'll notice is that Really, the extension tubes do a freaking good job. I use them on the 28 to 75 millimeter from Tamron on my A7R3, and I was thoroughly impressed with how sharp the images are. It's certainly not as good as the macro lens, but if you're not using it for extremely professional work, like taking pictures of diamonds or something, the extension tubes will get you by for everyday, like casual macro work. I enjoy putting them actually onto my 90 millimeter lens in getting some very close focus shots. And it works quite well in those situations as well. In conclusion though, I really recommend you trying out these extension tubes. For their price, I really can't think you go wrong with them. There's no reason to not get them if you're looking into experimenting with macro. I don't want you thinking from this video that they can replace a macro lens because a true one-to-one -one macro lens is a completely different functionality than these extension tubes. What these do is basically give you a baby step into macro photography. And I recommend picking them up alongside getting some decent lighting like a sweet Godox flash or even an LED light because that's gonna give you better sharpness with your macro photography and being able to shape light in macro is arguably more important 
than using a macro lens because anyone can get really close to their subject, but if you can't get it sharp and get it in focus, there's not much point to doing that because you need to use such high f-stops at that focal distance. So I recommend maybe looking into that part of macro photography using extension tubes and then jumping into buying an expensive macro lens. So I think these are perfect for getting started. And once you even get started and then you do buy a macro lens, you can attach these to your macro lens to get even more macro shots, which is freaking awesome as well. Anyways, that's it for the video. I really hope you gathered some good information from it. If I missed something in the video or you have a question for me, please drop a comment below. I love answering them and I try and answer all the questions I get in comments. But if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and maybe consider subscribing. It helps out a ton and I really hope to make more videos in the future. So I hope you can come along for the ride. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you have an awesome day. See ya.